Hello and welcome to Season 8, Episode 13 of Unlimited Opinions. I'm Adam Bishop. I'm Mark Bishop. We are, of course, reading George Lakoff's Moral Politics, How Liberals and Conservatives Think. Uh, this time, I'm going to try and plow through a big chunk of this book, maybe without even talking a lot about what he said. Uh, we have one more section where he's going about like a specific uh, current event type deal where he's talking about how can you love your country and hate your government. Uh, and then he has a long section, uh, three chapters, where he just sums up everything that he said, even though this whole whole book has felt like he's just been summing up something that he said, you know, something that he just kind of asserted within the first three pages and has been repeating uh, nonstop with really no evidence throughout the whole book. Did I already say something on this? <laughs> yes, you did. Well, oh, okay. we lost a section of the recording. Oh, okay. we're, we're, we're acting like we didn't lose anything. So it flows better, oh, so people don't realize. Damn it. Yeah, uh, well, now the audience knows. Really oh, well, uh, oh, well. I said something insulting about the author. Yes. Insult, insult, uh, funny quip. Mm, that's good. That's a good yeah. summary. Um, <laughs> well, do you have any, any big thoughts you want to say? How much of this did you read? I have big thoughts. How you can love your country and hate your government. Yes. And how can you not... Mm-hmm. Love your country and hate your government is my question. Mm-hmm. In response to his question, I will say this. He says a lot of things. He does. Um, well, he says a few things, but he doesn't discuss. It's all about the conservatives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's not a single mention of his uh, suckling mother theory or whatever the hell it was. <laughs> <laughs> the nurturing mother. Um, <clears throat> So, it, you know, he's talking about, let me summarize him All in right. this chapter. He's talking about, he's befuddled. Mm-hmm. He's uh, confused. He is, uh, he doesn't understand yes, how conservatives can uh, love your country, love their country, but hate their government. Yeah, I, th- I think you're you're right about that, that he just does not seem to grasp anything about how conservatives view the world, uh, or generally, I think, how most ordinary people view the government. Because I, I know we were talking about this a little bit before we started recording when you were reading this earlier today, um, but you're right, he doesn't mention any of the liberals that hate the government. I think there's a good section of those, too. Um, but he's just saying, you know, it's, it's crazy how the conservatives are like this, how they can dislike uh, the government at all, which I think is, is a belief held by most people. I am going to summarize, I'm going to quote... Yes. Uh, two lines okay. from this book that summarize the entire gist of this great philosopher, mm-hmm. political thinker, and linguist, George Lakoff. Yes. This is what he says on page 275. I do not know the answer to any of these questions, <laughs> but they are questions that have to be asked. And I would not be surprised if the answer to some of them mm-hmm. were yes. Yeah, that that is that is I think I need we, that's what we need to have like as a as a plaque yeah. or as a, as a banner. <laughs> uh, George Lakoff, super yes. genius. Mm-hmm. I do not know the answer to any of these questions. Why write a chapter when you don't know the answer to any of the questions? And you say, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them were yes. Mm-hmm. Well, if, as a matter of well, because it uh, uh, of uh, 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 of probability. Mm-hmm. When you ask a number of questions, yes or no, some of you don't be surprised. Some of them will be yes. Yes. <laughs> That's how valuable mm-hmm. this man's writing is. Mm-hmm. Which is not at all. Yes, it's, it's okay, terrible. Go ahead. It's, it's allowing him to assert things without really asserting them and saying, well, I was just posing hypotheticals. Because what he's talking about, he says, is the reason why conservatives can hate the government it's because they have this abusive father modeling, right? Yes. They believe in the strict father, but they have experiences with, like, abusive fathers if they, they take the power too far. And he says, and then he lists all these hypothetical questions that he yes. says, well, maybe the answer to some of them is yes. Mm. I says, you know, where does this come from, this idea that we need to, to guard against the government? Uh, uh, is this because they came from families or communities which had problems with abusive, neglectful, alcoholic fathers? Do they have a model, either a central model or a negative variation, of a family with an abusive or neglectful, strict father? Are such models learned from generation to generation? Are they learned in the military and competitive sports and schools and fraternities or other social organizations? And just kind of saying these things yes. with the the obvious implication that yes, you know these mm-hmm. things are instilling these horrible values on people, but it allow, allows him to just propose them and just say, well, maybe they're true. Yes. but he's not actually doing anything. Correct, and and, and he's leaving off the answer to the mm-hmm. questions, which is patriotic Americans can love their country but hate what the commie bastards have done to to uh, undermine mm-hmm. the constitutional order. I mean, that's, that's really why mm-hmm. you would hate your government, but you love your country. Yes. 
it's so obvious Mm -hmm. to anybody why conservatives can love the country but hate the government. Because the government has lost its way, so to speak. It's not some psychobabble thing about my dad. (laughs) You know, it's about a a, a political perspective. Mm -hmm. And and then he doesn't even mention. I, you know, mm-hmm. and I was thinking about this on the way home. Mm-hmm. So the, this is this is the, the the title of the chapter is how you can love your country and hate your government. I'm like, well, why, why doesn't he look at the nurturant suckling mother thing uh, theory and and say, well, what about them? How can they love your their country and hate their government? They don't love the country. Mm-hmm. So why would he address it? Because they never loved the country. Mm-hmm. They hate the country. Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> uh so anyway so yeah he, he's got it is mm-hmm. psycho babble yes it, it, it is just, here we find many of the conservative attitudes towards the federal government uh it is distant mm-hmm. it doesn't know what it's best uh, at the, uh it doesn't know what's best at the local level and shouldn't meddle or interfere with uh mm-hmm. interfere it is resented as if it does that's federalism you dolt <laughs> You know, yeah. the, like, that's the, what she it, said. I heard you. You were reading this in the basement yeah. earlier, and I could hear you <laughs> as you loudly just shouted things as you read this. Because <laughs> this guy doesn't know what federalism is. And I think you're right. He just doesn't know, he, well, he, well, or doesn't acknowledge. Yes, I'm sure he's heard of it, but he he's such a bad faith writer, mm-hmm. um, and and he's just such a turd. Yeah, and yeah, you, you, this is the kind of guy. That you run into after you've had a couple of drinks at like the Chamber of Commerce dinner, and he wants to talk politics. Well, I think he's an age of other thing. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Well, <laughs> there was this one time this one girl said this thing, but it wasn't because he was a nurturant mother. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Just shut up. Uh, I actually have written in the margin. Uh, you know, he talks about bigotry mm-hmm. in the moral order. Yeah, which has nothing uh, to do with his proposed and, chapter, you know, no. how you can love your country. But he, he goes on, he just asserts. Um, he because says, the white culture is dominant, then mm-hmm. uh, uh, whites are better. Yeah. Uh, and so I have written in the margin, fuck you. <laughs> 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 because he's just defaming everybody mm-hmm. he doesn't agree, agree with. He's just asserting these mm-hmm. things. And then, of course, what does he have to talk about? And, and, it's, and it's obvious to me what he would talk about from a 1990s book, which is the militias. Yes. And that doesn't mean anything to you in mm-hmm. your youth, yes, your very youth, little. youthful exuberance. You don't know that there is this, this fake crisis that the Dems try to say that all these conservatives were, they're militia people and they're anti-government and they're anti-American and they're, and they're racist. And yeah, the Ku Klux Klan, mm-hmm. the Ku Klux Klan, they're, they're out to get you, man. Uh, you know, they're they're there and they aren't there anywhere. They they yeah. they don't even exist. You know why? Because the Democratic Party, which is what the Ku Klux Klan was, said, you know, we probably shouldn't have the hoods on. Let's just be overtly racist to everybody. <laughs> we don't we don't need to be in costumes. Uh-huh. Anywho, yeah. Because as we all everybody should know, uh, if we were taught history, the Ku Klux Klan was in, uh, the the militant wing of the Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. And they're the racist, and they're the uh, the murderers yes. of African Americans. Uh, they, they they've murdered, you know that the Democratic Party through that armed wing has murdered more blacks mm-hmm. um, than the blacks. <laughs> 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 That's kind of a a very dark version of a Nor McDonald joke. Anyway, go ahead. Um, yeah, what, what I was, was going to say about that is it's just such a bad faith argument that. Um, you know, well, clearly conservatives just want to uphold the moral order, whatever the status quo currently is. Yes. Therefore, they're all racist. They're all bigots. That's why they're opposed to gay marriage. That's why they're opposed to anything that's outside of the norm. He doesn't care enough or just doesn't like conservatives enough to bother to look into any of the actual reasons for why people believe what they believe. Yes. And, and I'll, I'll tell you right now, this book has been refuted by reality mm-hmm. on that very subject because now the dominant culture in America is pro gay. Mm-hmm. We just finished uh, the Gay Pride Month. Yes, blessed be it forever. <laughs> praise be upon it. Praise be, praise be, praise be upon it. The Gay Pride Month. Uh-huh. You know, we have we have a transgender day. Mm-hmm. We have all these. That's the dominant culture. The White House hangs up. So wait a second. Flags. So now, why aren't conservatives appraising that? Mm-hmm. This is strict father morality, which he asserts. Mm-hmm. 
says, whatever's dominant, we're going to follow. Yeah. It's like if, if we saw yes. Joe Biden hanging up the pride flags, like I was saying, then we yes. should be in favor of, of gay pride. Absolutely, mm-hmm. because it's a dominant cultural thing. And because that is is favored by a majority and the powerful, then we're going to we're going to fall in the line with mm-hmm. that. So yeah. so this book has been refuted by reality since mm-hmm. he's written it. And, and, and what was the other thing? Oh, yeah. You know, his militias, he talks about the militia people. That's the current democratic talking point of the, the MAGA people. Mm-hmm. Ooh, scary MAGA people. They wear red hats. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, I'm angry. Mm-hmm. It's been a long day. Yeah, I can tell. So what else do we want to talk about this so, nonsense? I will mention a few things. So you didn't read the next three chapters, right? Yes, I did. Oh, did. I did not the whole thing. Oh, you did not. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 here I do have, um, oh yeah, it, it, the beginning of chapter 17, varieties mm-hmm. of liberals and conservatives. Mm-hmm. This is liberalism and conservatives are anything but monolithic. And so I have written this very poignant question. Mm-hmm. This is, this is on page 283. I have written, what about the previous 282 pages of oversimplifying <laughs> evil conservatives? Yeah. I mean, and I had that exact same question as he goes through here and I had some other points like that, but he's like, he spent this whole time trying to make the argument that, I mean, he said a few times, you know, you have gray area, but fundamentally there are two groups of people who have two separate worldviews and that's how yes. they view the whole world. Yes. And then he says, well, it's not monolithic. And it's yes. like, you can't really have those two things. It's like either you have a lot of varieties of worldviews, you know, they might share some same values, but you can't say there are two fundamental worldviews uh, and that's it uh, in grouping politics. Cause it goes through. And the first thing he talks about is of course, libertarians, um, here a little bit, I think, or maybe that's the next chapter. Yeah, maybe later. Uh, might be a little it's, bit it's later. It's in this chapter, I think. Yeah. Linear scales, moral mm-hmm. focus. Yeah, he talks about you know how different individual things, versus social focus. He spends a lot of words saying there can be different levels of things. Is really what he's saying. You could be yes. you know believe in one thing a little bit more than another. You can value some things more than others. And he spends a lot of time. But he talks about libertarians. Yeah, and he says they're yes. essentially just like two steps away from being mainline conservatives. Uh, you know, they, they think they're this entirely different thing, but what he argues is if you're a conservative and you place, you know, self-reliance above all of your other, you know, moral values, then you're going to become a libertarian because then it's just whatever, you know, suits you the most um, and you're going to devalue other things, let other people do whatever they want as long as their self-reliance is there. And I think it's true that libertarians tend to align more with conservatives than they do with Democrats just because Ooh, of the... I don't know him anymore. Did you, did you mm. see Trump at the libertarian that's convention true, of that's freaks true. as freakazoids? That's true. At least in the, in the, in the rhetoric of... Uh, uh, of like big government versus small government. They've uh, lost their way because, uh, you know, they used to be able to say, well, we're a limited government because we want our pot legalized. Mm-hmm. And now the pot's legalized everywhere. They're like, eh, I don't know what to do. I just don't all the time. Hmm. Uh, libertarians. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned like there is two, the libertarians are two steps away mm-hmm. from conservatives. And I was thinking, how big are those steps? Which reminds me, when I was in a trial as a young prosecutor with a DWI defendant in front of a jury, the guy says, I only had two drinks. I said, man, how big were the drinks? <laughs> how? I have my hands out. I'm, 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 I'm gesticulating to the to the audience. Like, like I'm holding up a giant watermelon. <laughs> how big were the drinks? <laughs> and uh, uh, if you get the jury to laugh at a defendant, mm-hmm. it's usually a good sign as a That's prosecutor. Good. That's good. You don't want them to laugh at you. You don't want to make a joke out of it, mm-hmm. the whole process, but you want them to laugh at the story. There's anyway, that's yeah. a little trial advice. Yes. But I know I think I think who might be a, a lawyer in the future. There you go. Um, but I think you're right about you know the libertarians that it's it's it is a big step away because it's it's completely removing a lot of the moral system. You know, he's if if Lake libertarians Office, don't have a moral. That's system. what I'm saying. It's removing the conservative moral system. Like if you're if you're going to argue that con, that libertarians are just watered down conservatives, you have mm. to remove a lot more than what he's saying. Is what I'm saying. Yes. Um, How much water is there? <laughs> It's a lot of water. A lot of water. You got to water it down. Um, because, but if you're, you cannot argue they're operating on the same moral framework if their moral systems don't align. They don't have a moral system. That's what I'm saying. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm refuting Lakeoff. I'm not refuting you. I know that. You can't refute Why are me. You can- <laughs> I am irrefutable. You keep saying the same thing. I'm just agreeing with you in a weird way. <laughs> I, I know. I feel like you're, you're, you're combating me. I have yet to disagree with you. <laughs> but you're saying it like you're disagreeing with me. I have a talent for making myself... Uh, Obnoxious. Oppo- no, well, that's true, too. Oppositional. <laughs> yes, that, that is true. That Oppositional is in true. attitude, but not in speech. Yes. 
Because what I was going to say was that the liberal They don't have a moral <laughs> chest. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say it. Okay. Because they don't have any moral basis for any of their, their, their arguments. Because they're, they're like, yeah, have, you know, uh, decriminalize drugs, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, because they don't, you know, they don't, again, they don't see anything more important than what they want to do. Yes. Generally speaking. Yes, I want the freedom to do uh, evil. Y- yes. I'm a libertarian. Mm-hmm. And then he moves into to feminisms. That's what he spends the rest of this chapter talking Plural. about. What are the feminisms? Well, he says there's there's a bunch of different models of feminism um, in that, you know, there's a rights-based feminism that everybody should have uh, I, you know, the I same have, rights. I, I'd like to announce to our uh, listener mm-hmm. that I had at least 10 different categories immediately come to my mind, one more profane than the other. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to reserve uh, those insulting descriptions mm-hmm. of the various feminisms. Yes, but so go he, ahead. He says, and I think, and I think he's generally got some amount of an idea about these things, but clearly not enough to to make it worthwhile. Because he says, some says, you know, everybody just needs you know equal rights. Some say there needs to be no difference between men and women, even culturally, and you know how we how we use gender and stuff like that. And I think that's become much more prominent now. Um, yeah, he's got, he he's got a little section of gender, which I think he is really at the forefront, quite mm-hmm. frankly, in the 90s, because that was not a thing where he's talking about gender being a, uh, a cultural concept yes. uh, mm-hmm. 299. So, uh, yeah, hooray for him. Yeah, he he anticipated the even, mm-hmm. even crazier writers to come. Yeah. And then he goes on. He talks about biocultural feminism, which is this weird thing that I've never heard of. Um, but he says that really the things should be inverted um, and that like women are in tune with nature and therefore society ruled by women would be better and, and more uh, beneficial. Yes, it's yes. like the, the weird right. eco like feminism yeah, mother stuff. Mother nature. Yeah, mother nature yes. type people. Mother nature's a woman. Yeah. Mother nature's a made up character. Mm-hmm. And then he says uh, conservative feminism. He says conservatives mm-hmm. can be feminists. Uh, because he he cites Rush Limbaugh. He says, when I attack feminism, I'm not opposing equal opportunities for women. I'm totally in favor of equal pay for equal work. And he admits in here, I forget what what exactly words he says. He says, if uh, feminism were no more than believing that women are strong, should have equal opportunity and deserve equal pay for equal work, then Rush Limbaugh would be a card-carrying feminist. Yeah, I mean... But is is that not what feminism is? Yeah, conservative feminists are the only true feminists. The other ones are just Marxist weirdos. Yeah, because they said that there's no difference between men and women. Yeah, there's the the bull dykes. (laughs) These, these. <laughs> that was that was the first of ten. Oh my gosh! Um, but yeah, he, he essentially just dismisses all of that because well, conservatives aren't really feminists because there's so much more to it than that. You, know, you have your weird eco warriors and the right. radicals and stuff like that. The conservative goddess movement. Yes, I forgot what that was. That was it seemed absurd to me. I can't remember. It's again. He, he's essentially saying that some conservatives. He he ties this this idea of the, the, the eco feminism as mm. if it's a an, an offspring of the evangelical movement. Mm. He, he's citing oh, this. Yeah, I've yes. never heard of this, but he says yeah. you know women. Uh, find and hold ceremonies at power spots in the terrain, places where they can tap into the power of the earth. Women lead he- healing ritu- rituals out in nature, rituals in which they sing, beat drums, dance, and allow the power of the body to emerge, rituals that in many ways are like evangelical Protestant church services. Yes, it's very, very conservative. They, they're <laughs> uh, uh, Republicans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Often ha- go out in the woods and find a, a, a position of power and beat drums. I was reading this. I'm like, what is he talking about? I thought he was talking about, this book was about political like yeah. ideas. I'm like, what what political group is this? This is not like a thing that anybody he really dated believes. some gal in San Francisco <laughs> that said, Yeah, we're all conservatives. We go out and beat drums and uh, dance. We allow right. the power of the body to emerge. Yeah, that's that's about right. It, 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 women need healing and I'm reading the book. We, this is exactly how she said it. <laughs> women need healing rituals out in nature, rituals in which they sing. Beat drums, dance, and allow the power of our body to emerge. Rituals that may wear evangelical Protestant. Sounds conservative no, to that's me. That's exactly yeah. what uh, normal people would do. Yeah. Uh, so he's clearly describing, you know, mainline conservative beliefs there. Yes. So that's what he spends that whole chapter talking about. Yeah, it was I don't ridiculous. know why. It was just a complete waste of time. The next one is paper. worse, mm. um, where he talks about pathology, stereotypes, and distortions. I confess, I have not read this. That's all right. I'll summarize. He says, uh, you know, there's ways to turn these these ideas evil, is essentially what he says. 
Weirdly, oh. he only focuses on conservatives. Huh. And again, he says, uh, again, essentially along the lines that a, a pathology, which he says is a, essentially a warping of one of these worldviews. Um, that's, oh, yeah. That's this, I did read part of this where he said uh, the, this, uh, uh, pathological stereotyping of liberals. Mm, right? Did mm. I interrupt you? I'm sorry. No, that's, that's yes. all right. Because he said conservatives are bad because they stereotype the, the mm-hmm. dipshit liberals. Yeah. And what he says is essentially that fascism is only a few steps away from, mm. from mainline conservatism. And, and what he says when you're, when you're stereotyped How the liberals... How those steps? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but he says, he says the, the, the conservatives stereotype the liberals so much that it you know, riles up all of the conservatives to make them think that they're evil. Mm. And essentially that the people uh, you know, who are on the radio saying that liberals are bad and liberal worldviews are bad are going to be responsible for crimes that are committed against liberals. Uh, uh, and he says, if only. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he says. He says, you know, if, yes. if these conservatives keep <clears throat> using these stereotypes. And I thought that was so ironic when I was reading this because he spent this whole book, you know, we're over 300 pages yes. in now at this point, yes. building up this horrible caricature of yes. conservatives saying they're so close to fascists. They're so close to just not being in touch with reality. You know, they don't have any common sense behind it. Mm. How can he write that and not realize that he is doing that exact thing yes. for conservatives? Uh, liberals always tell on themselves mm-hmm. if you just listen to them they will th- th- it's always by projection so we've seen this time and time again with trump and in the modern liberals we saw it with bush and romney and all that kind of every every prominent conservative everything they accuse us of they do mm-hmm. you know you're gonna you're gonna weaponize the military what are they doing you know, they're going to weaponize the Capitol Police. What are they doing? You know, the, we're going to weaponize the judiciary to go after your political enemies. Well, what are they doing? Mm-hmm. Every time. And so he's, he's, he's anticipatorily defaming uh, the, the conservatives yeah. with the stuff that if given the power to do it, he'd mm-hmm. do it for sure. Because, I mean, that's, a, that's, that's exactly, what he's been doing. you know, if he thinks that's the logical conclusion, then if you're reading this and you think, oh, well, these conservatives, they're, they're, they're complete bigots because yes. they don't have any concept of what is right and what is wrong. They're just going along with what's the Correct. status quo. Then if whoever gets in power says that this is the new status quo, then they're going to be evil and they're going to kill people. I have to stop those conservatives. You know, that's, that's what the right. liberal would think if he's, yes. if he's right about this. Um, yes. and, and that's it's crazy that he wouldn't realize that while he's writing it. Yeah, I don't think he's that bright. <laughs> yeah, I think you're I really, right. I, yeah. I think he's really below average uh, competency mm-hmm. for thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're right. I mean, I, I'm kind of curious about some of his other, like, writings and articles and things like that, because he's, he's a very often, like, cited person in the linguistics field and like the field of psycholinguistics and how, how the I, mind I, I works sus- with language. I suspect they're all written in crayon <laughs> <laughs> or finger paint. But I mean, I'm, I'm really genuinely curious because... You Knock know, yourself I, out. I'm not doing it. Well, no, 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 no. I'm not saying I'd ever make you read one of these again. Um, <laughs> I'm about to light this on fire right here. But what I'm, what I'm saying is, you know, it makes me wonder about a lot of the, the quote unquote, like academic articles about mm, politics and yes. about, you know, you know, anthropology and, well, and, and yeah. sociology and things like that. Because I haven't read a lot of those, mm. but you hear them cited all of the time, yeah. you know, especially mm-hmm. from, from people on the left. Well, actually, you know, these, these frameworks are, are racist and things like that. And it's yeah. like, are, are all of these types of articles like this? And I've, I've kind of suspected so for a while. Yes. Um, but it's, it's like this is, I think, a very clear example of just how out of touch with reality a lot of these academics are who are, who yes. are allegedly supposed to have had many, many years of education, many years of research. And this, is, this has been peer-reviewed and published. This is the third edition of this book. Right. Um, it's just baffling to me that this is what it is. I don't think anything in academic circles... Uh, that has been published since 1980 is really worth a damn. Yeah, I mean it's it's been such a decline, and, and the, the same thing is true of like uh, law school journals. Mm-hmm. Used to be a really good resource when I first came out into practice law for several years, but if you look at the law school journals now, it's a bunch of political ha- uh, bullshit. I mm-hmm. mean, pardon my language, I keep swearing at this thing, but but uh, I won't even look at them anymore. Mm-hmm. It's not a research tool because there, there's no standards. They don't know how to read. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't know how to write. They don't have a research or reason. Uh, I've read some really wacky stuff about the death penalty, which is like, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. There's nothing that supports that. Of course, I'm somewhat of an expert in that field. But um, but I, I, I think 
you know, the, the, the academic standards have just gone down so far it's, it's, it's in the social sciences, mm-hmm. especially it's like, yeah. these people don't well, even know what they're talking I've about. I've encountered that a lot. You know, I think it's, it's very clear in classics because um, mm-hmm. classics is a field that's been around a lot longer than, than linguistics. So a lot of like the linguistic stuff is very hyper technical mm-hmm. um, much of the time, which, you know, I think is, is good for academic writing. Um, you know, a good chunk of it is sort of like this where yes. it gets into the identity and stuff. But when you're looking at the core areas of linguistics, very hyper technical and stuff like that, because the field yeah. emerged relatively recently. Recently, if you look at classics, on the other hand, mm. you have to go back a ways to get to good writing. Yes. Um, because all of the modern stuff, you know, within the last 40 years, like what yeah. you're saying, mm-hmm. it's all about identity. And it's all yes. about, you know, sort of uh, a new interpretation of, of yes. this, you know, famous poem that's 2,000 years old and how it reinforces, you know, the pop culture ideas <clears> of the day or how yes. these things are portrayed in modern media. But if you look at the, the articles written, you know, pre you know, the 1950s and before. They're, yes. they're really astounding yes. uh, for these people who have, you know, either been archaeologists and gone out and, and explored things or really looked at these things and figured out, okay, how do we put these, you know, writings into the context of the culture? How can we, like, recreate, uh, you know, a model of what the society was like? And just modern researchers just don't seem to be as interested in that. Or if they do, it's, it's much more of a spin on things it's work. than it was in the past. Yeah, it's yeah. work. You know, to do good research, valuable research is work. To, mm-hmm. to spout off your opinion and half-ass sight stuff, that's easy. Mm-hmm. You know, people are just lazy and they're stupid. Yeah. There's not really like a, mm-hmm. uh, very smart people in the, those yeah. those fields. Well, I thought, uh, I thought you're it was funny. I thought it was welcome. Well, thank you. I thought you were talking about yourself. Oh, uh-huh. I'm not in that field. Well, you're a professor. I am not a professor. They call me instructor. Yeah, I am an adjunct instructor. Uh, But I thought it was funny because even in in the the preceding chapter, I don't know if you caught this, but he was talking about you know liberal intellectuals who have a strict father, uh, or liberal academics Mm -hmm. who have a strict father basis in academia. Yes, where he talks about well, you know, there's some people who are very liberal in their politics, but still see the importance of hard work and firm grades and strict, you know, whatever in the classroom. Uh, And he spends a a good chunk of writing on that compared to everything else. And I'm guessing that's because he's around a lot of people who are like that. Yeah, because there's some a level of competence. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that's a that's an ideal that both sides should be working towards. That we should be be testing based on on something. We should be putting hard work and making sure students uh, do hard work. What's the name of the book? I think it was. um, Gosh, who is it? I haven't read it. It's on the list of many. I have like ten books I'm reading Mm -hmm. at the same time, but. Uh, there's a book called Who Killed Homer, I believe. Hmm. And it's about the destruction of uh, classical education in mm-hmm. the United States and the Western uh, world. It's that nobody reads Homer anymore. Hmm. And, I'll uh, have to read that. Yeah, I'll, I forget who wrote it. But um, uh, I think uh, Victor Davis Hanson has said, you know, he's a classicist mm-hmm. of the old school. And, and he, he, was, he would always, uh, he, yeah, I listen to his podcast periodically. I don't listen to his much anymore because now he's getting like old man yelling in the wind territory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which uh, all of us are, yeah. uh, one extent or the other. But uh, but he talks about the degradation of the of the classics mm-hmm. field uh, oh, yeah. with well, the identity politics, and, and then of course you know he he, he taught at a uh, what was it UC Santa Barbara or some mm-hmm. one of the UC schools, and he had a real hard time getting people of a certain uh, race, ethnicity, or sex, even if they're really good students, into graduate schools, you know, mm. because they said, well, we're not taking any white males this year, mm. you know, that type of thing. So, you know, and that's anecdotal and all that, but, um, basically the fields just mm-hmm. kind of get bit, being destroyed and hollowed out from the yeah. inside. Well, I've, I've seen they don't, they don't require Greek and Latin yeah. for a, a, a PhD in, um, classics in, at Princeton, I think it was Princeton, Yale, and like the big, a the big of the ones. Ivies, yeah. yeah. It's like, um, how can you even think that? Well, there's a lot of people who hate classics, who study classics. Yes. That, yeah. that will, will hate the term, but also hate the field themselves. There's yes. a lot of those, you know, I'm, I'm a minority and I just don't feel represented, yes. you know, by, by the classical field. Well, we're studying ancient Greece and Rome, principally. Yes. Um, you know, so don't study it. Find something else. Yeah. And yeah. There's, there's, there's incorporation of, you know, other things, because there's a lot of influence on those, those cultures, of course. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of people who say, well, we shouldn't even be calling it classics mm. um, saying well that's that's ignoring the influence of other cultures you know on America or on the West and saying that, that the term classics is putting too much power mm. uh, you know on on the white people uh. um, and that we should should rename it we need to tear it down we did we need to change classics so it's really just focusing on whatever we want yeah um, is it, generally the, the well those the those frame. other cultures really had an influence in the f- fact that they would tend to breed chaos and destruction upon the classical world mm-hmm. and so they were very influential 
on. <laughs> so we should study yeah. them instead. Well, have I ever told we you? We should about, emulate. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, uh, you, go ahead. No, uh, no. Uh, I was going to uh, go down a dark road. Well, I'm going I'm <laughs> to take you on a on, a, on another path. Um, are we, we going to go any more chapters? Um, I'll, I'll mention a couple things about this last one. Right. Um, but uh, I want to also say, have, you, have, have I ever told you about the book Black Athena? Um, I don't recall if you have. I think I might have. Um, I, 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 it sounds great. But it was it I was, was highly added to my list. Highly recommended to me uh, by one of my professors at, mm. at Truman. Highly recommended to our class. Um, I will say I don't want to defame all of my professors at Truman. Two thirds of the classics department was was fantastic, and they were very very good good professors. Uh, mm. But this one particular professor that's a de- that's a decent batting percentage. If you mm-hmm. if you if you batted. 667 in, mm-hmm. in baseball, you'd be a multimillionaire. Yeah. Well, there's only three professors in the park. Oh, I wonder who that one is. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to name names. She's a very nice person. She's very encouraging. Oh, now you've identified and, it as a woman. Well, there so we go. That, uh, is it how many women were in that? Two. There, there are two. Oh, uh, so the, now we're down to 50-50. Um, she knows who she is. Yeah. Well, she's very nice, and I don't want to just just defame her for 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 everything because mm. uh, she was very encouraging and research and oh, stuff like a that. Pleasant, she's pleasant, she, yes. Dummy. Well, um, but she recommended this book, and it was all about. Uh, or she she brought it up in class one day and gave mm. sort of a glowing you know yeah, recommendation. Yeah, You're not necessarily yeah. recommending that we read it, no, but it's all about uh, the idea that Athena and several of the other Greek gods were imported from like sub-Saharan Africa. Sub-Saharan? Yes. Interesting entirely discredited i looked up the book after class looked at the wikipedia page oh wikipedia that's a a source that's that's a good source um of course um but you know you can get a good idea of 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 generally what people say about about literature the second paragraph on the wikipedia page yes just lists all of like the people who have discredited this book and just ripped it to shreds um well is it at least literary is it uh, you didn't read it i didn't read it it. 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 it might have been a pleasant read it might have been a pleasant read yeah black athena um, I, I didn't think there was that much cultural exchange between sub-Saharan Africa. There was Because that means below the desert. Yeah. Well, I have also seen a lot of people, and this is really, I think, shameful for a lot of people in the classics field. When they read the word African, they assume black. But there were oh, a lot yes. of African yeah. people, yeah. um, you know, in North Africa above yes. the Sahara, who, who you know did have a lot of trade and a lot of influence. I mean, the yes. Egyptians, particularly, of course, yes. um, you know, had a lot of influence on ancient Greece, and they're a much yes. older civilization for sure. But they read African and they assume, well, these are black people, right? That's just right. completely yes. racist to Egyptians and, yes. and to the Berber people of North Africa right. and whoever else lived in Africa. Different cultures, yeah. Um, it's, it's like a different type of people, yeah. Really. And it's like you see these weird theories from from people who are academics and who have degrees in this stuff, and it's like. Well, let's consider the possibility. I think it's um, one of the Roman emperors, Septimus Severus, um, who was like in the... the, Uh, Snape. Yes, exactly. Uh, I think it was around the year 200 or something like that. He was from Libya. And Mm -hmm. and you see these people going online and be like, well, we need to consider the idea that, that Severus... Was black was, was yes. a black man. We had mm. a black Roman emperor, and we we you know the we were here from the beginning, and we had mm. such a such a big influence because it's yes. from from black academics. Interesting, um, but he was Libyan. He, yes. he was he was like a Mediterranean skin tone person. Well, more I think likely they were all Irishmen. You know, I'm of Irish descent. Yeah. I think all the Roman emperors were Irish. Mm-hmm. You know, because they conquered the mm-hmm. world or something. If you know. you could write an article, you could cite like three things and say the the impact of Irish influence on ancient Rome was immense and should be studied more, and you'd be published. You know what? I'm too lazy to try, but I bet you I can get it done. <laughs> you could, because you, you could say, "Well, look, they, they they made it out to Britain. They would have had influence with the the, the, yes. the Irish people." Somebody came back, yes. and, and and you could draw together these two entirely disparate, separate things and say, "Look at them; they're kind of similar. Yes. Therefore, there's a tie." Mm. And that's what it's what's a big problem with I think classics and a lot of other fields is that they they try to find whatever they want to find. Yeah, like the correlation is not causation. Yes, I exactly, mm. exactly. And I think a lot of people that's forget too bad. that. Yes. Mm. Anyway, back to Lakoff, because um, he had one last chapter to? here. Um, well, I just want to address it, because we, we said we'd talk about the book. I'm um, into the Joe Biden territory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the last chapter for this section uh-huh. was, <laughs> can there be a politics without family values? Uh, his answer, uh, he spends a whole chapter talking about this, is, I don't know. Yes. We got to look into it. He's very useful. With yes. Because um, he says, you know, and it's a weird thing to say, I don't know to, because his answer should be no, you can't, because that's the whole thesis of his book, right? If you're going to write this whole book saying it's all based on this family value structure, he should be able to defend the idea that you have to have a politics centered around family values. Yes, that is correct. But that, he doesn't. That, yes. but he, he leaves it as, I don't know. But that should yes. have been the first thing yes. he did is, is try and prove 
with a lot of you know credibility, with a lot of information, yes. and say that the family values are the core of politics. It's essential. Yes. That's what he's been saying but for But he leaves it pages. to chapter 19, 331 you know, pages in. And he says, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Mm. Uh, he says, but we need to look into it. You know, Surely the family values have a big influence, but maybe you can have politics without it. It's like, well, okay. This guy's just an idiot. Yeah. I think that's, I've just come down to that conclusion, and it's yes. very, very difficult to well, continue. we have one more section of right. the book. And next, this is next where, week we'll yes, finish it out. We will finish it, and that is, yes. he has several I chapters. Read it, I will read it all. Yes, he has several chapters in that section, but it's why he says the liberals are right. Are we going to read the epilogues? I might. You don't have to, if you Agreed. don't want to. Yeah. Oh, well. Because he does talk about 2016. Oh, no. And so that's that's his most recent afterword. And so there's a possibility he talks about Trump in there. Oh, it God. might be more relevant. You think there's a, only a possibility? Oh, well, I don't know. It could have been written, well, I guess, by he 2016. Was a, yeah, he was, he was already, a campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in the campaign in 15. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But who knows? Who knows what he'll say mm-hmm. in there. I'm sure lots of well-reasoned, thought-out uh, ideas with a lot of intelligence. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, one thing I was saying to you uh, when we were talking about this the, this book the other day mm. is that I was amazed that, you know, he's a linguist by trade, a psycholinguist by trade. And this book is allegedly about linguistics. And I was amazed <clears throat> at how little he talks about language yes. in this book that is <clears throat> supposed to be about linguistics. There's almost none of it. Because he says, like, like you pointed out, once it's a metaphor. He's talking yes. about everything like it's a metaphor. That's, yes. that's like the only example of language he says. If you're going to write yes. something about linguistics, you need a lot of samples of speech, of how people talk about, about uh, politics, about how they talk about their values. But there's just none of that. Mm, that that's work. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yes, that, that's, that's their Achilles heel. <laughs> work. Of the liberal yeah. is hard work and consistent application of uh, also, disciplined effort. of the libertarian. Uh, I don't know about that's true. As long as they give them enough pot, <laughs> give them enough pot and porn, they'll be happy. Yeah, that's, that's they, how they you get, make a productive society right there. they get stuff done. That and video games mm-hmm. and uh, what else do they need? I don't know what they need. Mm-hmm. I think that's about all yeah. they ask for, right? Mm. Uh, they're usually men. Yeah, you notice that? Yeah, single men. They're like the they're like the version of the uh, the white fe- single white female mm. uh, liberal. Mm-hmm. You know, like that everybody hates. Mm-hmm. Libertarians are like the the guy version of that. Aren't yeah. They? yeah, like I they're just so. they're just really annoying. Yeah, and they want to tell you about uh, mm-hmm. how you should live your life and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, I, uh, that's a new theory. That's a good a theory. New pet theory of mine. All right. Do you have any other, other thoughts about <laughs> these chapters of George Lakoff's book? No, I'm just staring off to space like I'm Biden. Yeah, after you've kind a of debate. been doing that for a while. Yeah. Do you need me to help you out of that chair and walk you down? A while three tonight, steps? or like uh, recently, more often? No, I mean just oh, okay. just right now as we've been That's recording. Long day. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I'll I'll get mom in here and she can like coddle you away and you know that's not going to happen <laughs> <laughs> but if i get alzheimer's i'm in trouble <laughs> i'm on my own all right well this has been season eight episode 13 of unlimited opinions i've been adam bishop I'm still mark bishop more great thoughts about Lakoff as we wrap up. Oh, and I guess we'll, we'll have to pick a new book. Um, or you will. Or people yes. can tweet yeah. suggestions at us uh, if they want. Any suggestions are welcome. <laughs>